On May 17th, we are doing a live Q&A, 12 noon Pacific time, 3 p.m. Eastern time. I want you to tell everybody and their mama about it. That's May 17th. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check my social channels for updates. See link below. Welcome to The Fall Estate. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. I want to know how we can help black Americans have better futures. I have with me, my guest today, is Starlet Quarles. She's the president of Urban X Marketing and radio host of The Dialogue. The Dialogue. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for inviting me. I totally appreciate it. I appreciate you inviting me. Do you believe that we are born in a fallen state? What are you, what are you defining as a fallen state? Um, falling away from God? Not necessarily. I think there's a lot of evil in the state, in the world. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. But I think, especially when you're talking about black people, I mean, we're just a spiritual people. Black um, people so, are? Yes. Yes, I believe you are very spiritual. And are they in a fallen state? Not all, not all, not all, but most. Meaning that, have they fallen away from God? Um, to a certain degree, yes. I right. believe... Um, the baby boomer generation in terms of the church. I think the church has failed this generation, actually. I grew up where there was still a moral compass in right, the family. There was still a moral compass being portrayed in media and on television. So I think we're doing this generation a grave disservice by not being more uh, spiritually connected. So you can overcome that fallen state, right? Of course you can overcome you can. it. You can what? overcome it in your home, yeah, absolutely. That's right. What happened to black Americans? Not all, not all, not all, but most that they fell away from God and now they're just out there. I think it's the hypocrisy in the black church um, that has, especially for my generation. I think in my parents' generation, the church was very integral uh, in the community. I, keep, I think it kept us mobilized. I think it kept the family intact. And somewhere that generation failed, I think, at least from my perspective, they don't teach you how to be Christ-like. Yeah. And you see the hypocrisy. Uh, you see the um, prosperity movement in terms of just talking about being prosperous versus helping one another and embracing other cultures and being closer to God. When I was growing up, we didn't rely on the church to do that. It was the father and mother Absolutely. doing that. Uh, so what happened to the homes that, you know, you have 73, 72 percent of black children, black babies born out of wedlock because they're the ones who are setting up the children to fail in life. If you notice, most of the kids are angry today, and the fathers are not around, so it's the mothers and grandmothers who are making them angry. She's passing their anger down to the children. What happened to the parents that they decided not to do it right? I don't think that they didn't decide to do it right. I think it's just a reflection of institutionalized racism um, to the extent that our heads of households are being incarcerated. There aren't men in the homes to be able to balance the strength of black women. So we get branded with being angry, but we have to be able to fill two roles. And I think that black men are targeted, and I think that they um, have not been able to be embraced. In term but that's been since, since slavery. And we all know that the heads of household are our men. So to the extent that there's not a man in the household and they're being raised by music or television, I mean, I grew up when there was just Benny Hill. Do you remember Benny Hill? I do. Okay, so Benny Hill had coconuts, right? So these kids see the real. Um, so, so you're saying that institutionalized racism is causing black people to have babies out of wedlock? I don't think it's causing black people to have babies out of wedlock. I think it's allowed, I think it's impacted the stability of the black family and taking the black men out of the household and in the media and just what people are portraying and in the music and what these kids are seeing. They're not seeing a two parent. I mean, I grew up, Grandfather and grandmother had 16 kids. They stayed married until death do they part. So I'm from Los Angeles, so we don't see often a two, I mean, in my adult life, I have yet to date a man that comes from a two-parent household, but That's I grew amazing. up. Isn't it? It's it sad, is. actually. I grew up under the Jim Crow laws down in Alabama on a plantation, and during those days, less than 10% of black people, black people were born out of wedlock because black people were getting married, they had families, and things were rougher then for them than they are today. So if it has anything to do with slavery or racism, why do we see it more back then than we do today? 
I think it's just an intergenerational curse, an intergenerational effect. So it's more than just slavery, it's just Jim Crow. And again, the media has a very, very strong impact. Kids are sponges, so they see reality TV shows and they have some of these rappers having five, six, seven different yeah. moms and different kids and it's being glamorized. And, and it starts in the home. Family starts in the home. So yes. if the conversations aren't happening in the home, then we're doing our kids a disservice. If black people were a more people would they be affected by uh, prisons and jails and so-called racism? What do you mean by, I think we are moral people, what do you mean? I just think the church hasn't done its job. But so, you don't need the church to be a moral person. You're like already moral because you have good parents who are moral parents and they're setting that example for you. And so it, it demonstrates that the parents are no good. The, the fathers and mothers are immoral people and they are setting there, by example, setting that up for their children. And so when you go off to church, it's the responsibility of the preacher to correct that by telling the people you need to turn back to God. I don't think and, that the parents are immoral. Yes, and I do believe that it starts in the home. Yeah. Just as wealth, the lessons of wealth and money are taught in the home. What yeah. I think is that my generation have strayed away from the church because of what we've seen in terms of just the hypocrisy in terms of people not being Christ-like, I think I would consider my generation more spiritual. But there's still peer pressure, there's still a media influence. I mean, you can be a great parent at home and your kids still, because of peer pressure, uh, go out and do something or because of the music that they hear. But I if just, they were more people, they would not be having children out of wedlock. That's not necessarily true. No, more people don't have out of wedlock children. And so, I, mean, and, I disagree. Yeah. And the mothers would not be passing their anger down to their children. I don't think mothers are passing down their no, anger. No, they are. The, kid, the anger that you I'm see. I'm not saying that there aren't isolated instances. No, but majority as, you can, of but them as, are doing in, that. But generalizing black women, I don't think they pass down no, their anger to their the children. The fathers are not there, you agree, right? I do agree that some fathers so are not there. So the anger has to be coming from the mothers if the fathers are not there. Not necessarily. It could be coming from school. It could be coming from. Well, that's an add on to them because their mothers and grandmothers have set them up. Mother, black mothers and grandmothers, not all, not all, not all, are mean people. They have no patience, they have no love, they're imposing, and they traumatize their children by being I don't that think way. I that black women are mean people. They I think are. that we have to be See, able to be disciplined. You out because you had we, a we're father. We're disciplinarians. There. You lucked out because you had a father, and your father protected you from your mother. So you don't know how black mothers can be. That's not true. My mother is, was, was the one who primarily raised us. My father was an excellent provider. I mean, he was an entrepreneur. So in terms of my everyday lifestyle, my mother was a very integral part in terms of my... Right, my but he, your father protect you from her anger, right? No, why do you need to protect her? If I was wrong, then she had a right to be mad at me. Why should she have to protect... If I'm doing wrong and my mother disciplined me, uh, then why should, she, why should he protect her from disciplining me? Because it wasn't the, abused. It's the, fa it's the father's responsibility to stand between the mother and children. You act, like a, you act like black women can't be angry. Why can't we show anger? Because anger is of your father the devil. It's not good. There's no love in anger. And anger separates you from God. And so when you discipline your children, you discipline them with the nature of your father the devil who is like love. No one who has anger has love. I, I disagree. You I do? believe that, you, yes, because I, I love a whole lot of people and I get angry sometimes. I'm human. But then Things you don't love them with real love. You love them true. with the love, that fallen state of love. I, I, I disagree. Yeah. I believe that you can still be angry and still be able to have the capacity to love somebody. So then why are so many black children coming out of these homes angry at their mothers and grandmothers? I, do, I don't know that all black children are coming not out of their all, homes. Not all, not all, not all, not all, but most. So what are you defining as anger? How do you know that they're angry? What are they doing to display their anger? They are, they are acting just like their parents. They lack patience. They are joining gangs and doing drugs, and they don't respect the elderly anymore. They are ending up in jails and prisons around the country. They are attacking white Americans. They, they have no black, patience. Not they are, all black they are right, children are They are doing attacking that. other blacks. And, and that's coming from the home, from no, the mother. But that's, no, that's coming from their social economics. That, no. That's not necessarily coming from the home. I'm sure there are some good mothers at home. There are who, some. Who, we, there's a lot of <laughs> good black mothers at home. Where are they? What are you talking about? They're down the street. They're around the corner. Where have you been? I, I would like to do a town hall meeting with these good black mothers that don't have anger and have their children here. I guarantee so, you. So if a mother didn't have anger and their child... Uh, did something that was wrong, or what do you want? What do you, what would you prefer she do? She would be able to discipline them with real love, 
which would not traumatize them. She would be so able you must to, think, did you get weapons growing up? I did. Okay. Did that stop you from doing certain things? I'm not saying beating. No, I'm not. But I, I'm even not the Bible says spare shoot. the rod. You're right. Not but you rod. have to have the right spirit. And most black mothers today don't have the right spirit. That's not true. They're, where, they're are you, where, where are you getting your information from? How do you know about all black women's spirit? Well, I didn't say all. You keep throwing in all. But you're generalizing. Most, you're saying most, black women. Most. Not all. Not all. Not all. But okay, most. Okay. Uh, recently, you gave a, a TED Talk. A on, TEDx talk. Yeah, TEDx, TEDx talk Crenshaw. on gentrification. I did. In the Crenshaw area of Los Angeles. What is that? What is gentrification? Gentrification is the process of renewal and rebuilding that unfortunately sometimes displaces uh, families. And who, would, who, who are doing this? Who's doing what? Gentrification. It's, I don't think it's just a general person or general group of people, but it's, it's just the development process. It's just, I mean, along Crenshaw, I mean, there was a train coming, uh, as you know, the Expo Line, so that causes right. the rebirth of renewal and wanting to redevelop around this transit-oriented development. So if you don't own your real estate and you're a renter, unfortunately, you make it displaced if that property owner decides to right. sell their property. And that's how people get displaced. I'm not saying that that was It's not a negative thing then, right? Um, it could have some negative connotations depending on if things were taken. I mean, historically, there have been uh, properties taken by eminent domain um, from the state. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be um, a negative thing. Uh, the purpose of my TEDx talk was for my generation to see it more as something to capitalize on and to strategize around because real estate is a cyclical market, so gentrification is going to happen. Yeah. So um, because we knew that this train was coming, uh, we should have been buying up property in Inglewood a long time ago. That's right. Um, so it's about, it's about playing the game and understanding the game. And I think that that's something that was not passed down intergenerationally at either. We were taught to go to school and work for people, not necessarily to be the natural entrepreneurs me. that we are. One thing I noticed about, and I liked about your TED talk about this subject, is that you were not blaming it on white people, whereas many black people tend to call it racism, and they're complaining that white people are, are doing this to them, coming in, buying up property, and raising the rent. As a matter of fact, I asked my producer to define that for me, and that's what he said. And he's a white guy, there he is over there, way in the back. Well, the Wikipedia and, and, definition, and, but if you look at the, the Webster definition, there is no culture attached to the process oh, good. of gentrification. I like that. You're the first black person I heard define it in that way. Because he said, I said, what is gentrification? It's when white people move into the black community, they buy up the property, they raise the rent. That's not necessarily true. Gentrification uh -huh. <laughs> is a process of renewal and rebuilding. And if you look at some of the urban dictionaries or the recent dictionary, it's defined as the process of moving black people out. But the only way that black people can move out is if they sell to somebody that's not black. What ends up happening in black communities is that we don't value our property nor our family legacy. So we look to leave the community. We look to sell to the highest bidder versus being cognizant about who our, our buyer is or who we're selling to. I'm not saying don't sell, but if you sell, think about selling to somebody black. Do, are you attacked for not blaming it on racism? this gentrification thing, are you attacked for just saying it's the lack of knowing how to do business? I haven't been attacked. Um, and maybe that's just because of people who, who know me know that I, I speak from the legacy of a real estate development family. Yeah. And I understand the process of real estate development and how politics intertwine with the changing of our landscapes. However, um, as I said in my TEDx talk, that even though we are builders and we build for black people and in black communities, that doesn't mean that we haven't met with opposition from our own people. So part of my challenge in building in my community with my people is that they still have this relationship with the development community. So we're not looking to displace anyone. We're looking to provide home ownership opportunities. And you were fortunate in that your father was in business. He's a smart man and he was always in business. So it seemed as though you picked that up from him, whereas a lot of blacks don't have that. I picked it up from him by osmosis. Right, I remember you um, saying that, yeah. Because I often tell people my father sent me to UCLA to find a husband. You know, so by the time I got in grad school, he didn't necessarily uh, raise me and my sister to be in the business, like you see with, for instance, with Trump, and how right. he consciously raised his daughter and his sons to understand the real estate development industry. And it wasn't until I was in a PhD program in industrial organizational psychology and someone gave me Rich Dad Poor Dad. And I read that and understood the concept of wealth and intergenerational 
wealth and, and, and asset accumulation. And then I quit grad school and I got the master's and I wasn't crazy. Right. And I started working with my father. Um, so he wasn't cognizant, but I just blame that on, not even necessarily blame that, but he's just as a product of, of his parents, right? right. So you want to raise your daughters to be these domestic goddesses when he didn't realize that he gave birth to two entrepreneurs. Are you married? Nope. Have you ever been married? I have not. Do you want to be married? I used to. Do you want to now? I want to be in a long-term relationship. Does that mean include marriage? That doesn't marriage? necessarily include marriage. So you want to be in a man with a man but not married to him? It depends on his concept of marriage. Uh, I'm a rarity and I realize that I'm a rarity in terms of uh, coming from a two-parent household and understanding and seeing the value. So I look for implants from some country <laughs> town where they know <laughs> the value of families. Would you change your title? If, uh, I, if I got married, I would become the wife. Right, and would you stay home? No. You would not stay home? No. You would let your kids suffer? I wouldn't have any kids. I don't have any kids. Would you have kids if you got married? No. You would not? No. Well, there's no need to get married then. You asked me the question. Right. I told you I don't want to get married so at the you beginning. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want kids? Um, I'm not right now, no. Is someone dated? Have you ever dated? Don't I look like I've dated? Yes, I'm not, I'm none. I'm sorry? I'm, just, I'm not a nun. Of course I've dated. And so are you a difficult person no, to I'm date? No, I'm not a difficult person. No, I don't think I'm difficult at all. You're not a difficult I think I bring a lot of value to the table. Would the men who have dated you think that you're difficult? No, I think some of the men who date uh, independent, uh, successful. Oh, there's that word. Wait, 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 wait. wait, wait there's wait. that word. Wait a second. Whenever a woman say independent, that means she's difficult. I'm not difficult. Oh, you didn't let me finish the question. Go ahead. <laughs> so you ever already have a perception of what it means that, to be independent? When a woman says, I'm independent and I, strong, strong Trust me, I am words. looking for the uh, Clyde to my body. I believe in the power couple. That's all I've seen my entire life. But it depends on how he sees my role as a wife. If he sees me as a domestic goddess, then yeah, we're going to have a problem. Because that's not who I am. You didn't When you met me at the age that I am, I, I wasn't that. So... If he has kids, great. I don't mind being the stepmom, but I'm not looking to, you know, have give birth now. I oh, mean, that doesn't amazing. mean that I don't, I don't. Do your father know you think this way? Of course he knows I think he, that he way. He does know this? Of course he knows. And what is, is he disappointed? Of course. I mean, he wants to extend his legacy, but yeah. he has two so other kids. So does he regret sending you to school because the school messed you up like this? No, no, school did not mess me up. Who messed you up like this? First of all, I don't think I messed up. <laughs> First of all, but I think that I've had men who've, you let me finish my question. Oh, yeah. So I, I look for my Jay-Z and I'm just using that, you know, figuratively. Jay -Z. Wait a second. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow your roll. Not I'm, a good okay, slow your, okay. I'm just talking about in terms of a power couple. Let me oh, just say that. Okay. You want me to say Michelle and Obama? I'm looking for uh -uh. Michelle Obama. Okay. What's going to make you feel warm and fuzzy? I'm trying to just make you You're understand. You're all the wheat men. <laughs> They're not wheat. Anyway. So no, I am looking for a partner. Right, because I believe marriage is not a, a bad word. Wait a, second, wait a second. If you look at, you know, as an adult, I, I I went back and I saw the not saw, and I'm I'm not sitting here to proclaim to be a Bible scholar, but I reread, you know, Proverbs on, on the virtuous woman, right? And isn't that supposed to be God's ideal couple? So yes. she was an entrepreneur. I mean, she did, was not a domestic goddess. She woke up, she took care of the breakfast, she got the kids ready for school, and the housekeeper took care of the kids and did the domestic stuff. She went in the back, oh, she Lord. did her sewing, she went into the market and she sold it and she brought her home, the money back to her husband. He was a leader in the community. So she was not, the Bible doesn't depict the virtuous woman as a domestic goddess. That's amazing what people do with the Bible. So let me this ask. This is how I read it. So when you're like alone at night after you did your little power meetings and you went out. Why is it about, <laughs> it really was power. Why you gotta do it like that? <laughs> and you're alone at night. I'm never alone at night. And I'm not saying that I'd always have somebody, but I, I don't necessarily have to have, I have a huge family. I am the second eldest of 80 first generation grandkids. But so you I, don't ever long for the love of a husband? For a husband or for companionship are two different things. But if it's not your husband, it's not real love. Do That's you long for the true. husband, the love of a husband? Do I long for the love of a husband? Not necessarily a husband, and I don't long for you know a man the bible said he who finds so i'm not looking for anything i'm waiting for him to find me the right man to find. i only need one so you would live with a man and you would do the whole sex thing and everything without being married to him i could do that you would do that I but you're a christian how can you do that 
Just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I don't. You think I'm going to hell because I cohabitate with somebody that I'm not married to? I don't Nobody think. goes against what God will ask his daughter what he would want you he, to do. He does talk about marriage. Why would you marriage? disobey I'm your not father? Saying, I'm not saying that I wouldn't, but I would be open. But to, you already have your mind made up. That's what you're looking for. You want a man, but you don't want to marry him. Wait, you wait, 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 you're putting words into my mouth. But you what, would, tell, tell me what tell me what I want. What I want. You you want a man that you don't have to marry, and you want to. And I said I was open to. It. I said, but it's just, if his philosophy, if you're alignment, if, if we equally yoked, and we're on the same page, and we have the same life philosophy as it relates to religion and business, and we complement each other, then yeah, you know that, what? That's not a marriage. That, that is a marriage. A marriage is a marriage. partnership. I don't, I don't need for somebody to raise me. You know, I, I I need for somebody to help sustain my family legacy and to help build it. Does white privilege exist? Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. And where's the proof of that? All around. You know, I tell people often now, in hindsight, um, one of the things that I wish I would have been more cognizant of was the white privilege at UCLA that was sitting, you know, right next to me. For black people, I believe white privilege is something to, to leverage. Um, what is it, though? I, I don't see it anywhere. What is it? it? Huh? What, what is it? <laughs> how don't you well, people like me privilege? who don't see it. How do you not? What? How do you not see white privilege? Because it doesn't exist. That's yes, what it mean. does. So there's some, what there's is some it things, exactly? I believe white privilege, or is just the ability just to be free and white and not have the same type of social economic uh, and social ills as black people have to deal with. I mean, there's there's no uh, white racial profiling. White people don't get pulled over by the cops just because they're white. Um, they have the ability to, um, you know, show emotion and, and love to their sons without being emasculated. Uh, th there's all kind of examples That's of white privilege. That you Absolutely. Believe that. Why don't you? You black? How come you don't believe white privilege exists? What you see? Well, because I, I you know, I am black in color, but I don't have that dark mentality that most black people have. Clearly, I see. She said clearly. Mm -hmm. I see that. Uh, white people have the same struggles and things that we have in that what type of struggles uh, they have to they make have? their marriages work. They have to uh, make their children, help their kids grow up in the right way so that they can earn a living and be independent. But they also have the majority they of their fathers their kids, at home. Right. And the reason for that, it's starting to change somewhat now, but the reason for that is because they are taking responsibility for that, whereas black men and women are not taking responsibility for that as they did prior to the civil rights movement. Black people are blaming it on their lack of self-control and self-containment. They're blaming it on white people while white people are working hard to keep it going. I do believe themselves. that there is a need for black people to be held more accountable. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that that doesn't excuse racism. That doesn't excuse institutionalized racism. That doesn't excuse. But there's no that, such thing as that. Yes, it's it an is. illusion it's made no, up by not. black people no, and their not. leaders. No, it's not. It exists. Well, Sorry. where's the proof of it, though? What do you mean, where's the proof of it? There are many kids who are getting into, black kids who are allowed to get into these universities around the country, right, based on affirmative action, and uh, because of affirmative action based on their color. That's discrimination based on color, and that's wrong. And I, these uh, kids are getting in, but they're not earning their way, I, so they, when they fail, they feel less than before they were allowed to get in based on color. I'm a proud product of affirmative action. When I went to UCLA, it was because I was an affirmative action student. I'm sorry to hear that. And, and I think I turned out fantastic. So, and, so a lot of my peers who were having challenges getting into some of these predominantly white institutions, the affirmative action was great. My father went to, to Harvard. You know, he was one of very few blacks. Was he affirmative action? I don't, I, don't, I don't don't know if he was. That was back in the late 60s. Well, then I don't know. he wasn't. He okay. earned his way. So that being said, I still believe that affirmative action helped me get into UCLA and it gave me access. You would and not have gotten in there on your own because you were not smart enough. I don't know if I wasn't smart enough, but based on the curve and what I was competing with, with with you know other individuals who had different ec um, educational opportunities. And teachers, I mean, I'm coming from, you know, the LA Unified School District. I mean, so at the time, I think LAUSD was still pretty good. But I went to all white schools um, from high school so up through college. So you got a good education. Why couldn't you get into the school based on your own talent? I don't, I don't know. 
Maybe because I didn't have some of the opportunity. Because but you first had all, the opportunity. No, well, first of all, you had the same the SAT, opportunity those white kids were having. Not necessarily. I had different teachers. I had different so you resources. Went to a white integrated school. I'm talking about going white. into these other uh, into UCLA. I still had to do be able to deal with some of the issues and going to predominantly white schools. Like but what? I still had to be able to compete. Like what? What do you mean, like what? The, some of the issues going to a predominantly. I went white. to when I went to. Uh, I would graduate from university high school, and at the time they didn't have an African American student union. Uh, we an African American student union mm -hmm. at the school. Well, that's a good thing. They didn't have one. That's a good thing. Why? Why do you need something like that? They, well, they have Asian student unions. They have Jewish student unions. They did, have all kind of. Did they have student white unions. student union? They need student union. They ho they own the whole school. So the, but the kids <laughs> didn't own no, the school. The kids didn't. But I'm have. saying there's nothing. I don't think there's nothing wrong it's with having a segregated. Uh, you know, population of students who just want to uh, study together or work together or to be able would to Would you be with in support of a white student union? Yeah, of course. It would be okay with you? Yeah, why okay. not? But most blacks don't feel that way. I think all cultures should be able to, to segregate and to be able to work within their cultures and network within their own cultures, absolutely. Does racism exist? I believe racism does exist. Absolutely. And where's the proof of that? You just see it all over in the country, that we're proof of it. In terms what, of just the, what do the I see? Disproportion in the economics with black people. But that has nothing to do with racism. It does. Racism is about power. It's about who is in control. And black people can't be racist because we're not in control. We're not in control of the educational system, the, some of the social uh, organizations and things that run this country. We're not in control. Racism is about power. But you would who, be what in, control in control of your own life if you had good parents if they taught you how to be independent, if they taught you how to build, how to take care of. I've noticed that the reason I left where I lived over there in the Crenshaw District is that once the white people left, because once I moved there, when I first moved there, it was mostly whites. But once they left, as they did in Gary, Indiana, and other places, the blacks turned it into a ghetto. A beautiful area went to hell in a handbasket, so I got out. But if blacks had more character and they were taking care of themselves and being responsible and buying land and teaching their children. But that children, has to be taught. Then, right, has, so that, that, has that has nothing to, be, to do with racism. But that has to, that, of course, that has to be taught. So it's not racism, it's not white people's fault that you're not teaching your children to do that. No, but, but it's not, Is if that the parents true? don't know. They if don't the parents, know, if so, but if that's the, not if the white people fault know, though. It, but if they go into some of these institutions, these predominantly white institutions, they are targeted. They don't have the same opportunities because of their color. They, it's true. I mean, so I've then been, why go in there then? Why not go to all black school if you some feel Some people that? do choose to do that. I'm sorry? Some people do choose, that's well, why they, I, You see a lot of these black kids going to uh, these white universities and then they, they force their way in by saying, I need affirmative action. Once they get in, now they're crying racism. Why do you want to force your way in with the people you think are your enemies and you're still complaining once you get there? I don't think people are forcing their way. I don't, does they affirmative, are. affirmative action, action even exist? Is forced now? based on color. Does, but does affirmative action even exist? Are people getting in based on affirmative action? Yes. Today, Otherwise, I mean, they wouldn't be there. It, it, the way Trump has it down, he's just leveled the playing field. So it is going to have to be more about being able to be competitive. Hallelujah. Aren't you happy about that? To a certain extent, I think that Trump has, is going to force the black people to think more um, culturally and to think about mobilizing our resources and, um, and having to be able to compete. There's nothing wrong with competition. This whole Well, I don't think he's going to get them to think culturally. I think I he's going to get them to think independently and, and work hard and save their money and do the right thing and sell your product to anyone not some so-called so -called black dollars or anything like that. I think but when you have a product, you sell dollars. it to anyone. But I think that there's a value in recycling black dollars just in terms of the economics. I'm not saying you can't oppose, you can't sell to other cultures, but I think it's vital that we continue to recycle our dollars in our own communities. But don't you think something is wrong with black people that you have to tell them that? You don't have to tell them. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. You don't have to say recycle white dollars or Mexican because, dollars. Because it's, or, it's ingrained culturally for them to do that. So and, and, and black people used to have that too, prior it, to the civil rights used movement. To, like I talked about in my TEDx talk, you know what I mean, in terms of Black Wall Street. But that's something that was not passed down intergenerationally. I wish, you know, the lessons of Black Wall Street were passed down intergenerationally so that we would think to own the real estate in which we If operate there were our more businesses. people that would do it. I want to ask, are you, as an entrepreneur, are you glad that President Trump, that Donald Trump is president now? Not necessarily. You're not? Not necessarily because I'm not, I mean, I could recognize 
you know, the benefits as an entrepreneur, but I'm not necessarily happy that he's our president. What benefits do we, as an entrepreneur, do you see as a result of President Trump being there? I mean, I, to me, I tell people, and just in my personal opinion, that Trump is not someone to get emotional around, but to strategize around. I think he's going to benefit small businesses and real estate, so get in his lane. That's right. And so were you disappointed that Barack Obama was there for eight years and things got worse rather than getting better? You were not able to do that? As, and he was a so-called black president. He's black and white. But were you disappointed in him that he didn't have it in him to do that? I absolutely was not disappointed. As a matter of fact, I miss Obama. You miss him? I did. We held a fundraiser for you him. You miss Obama? I did. We held a in fundraiser. In a good way? I do, yes, absolutely. Meaning that you're happy he's gone as I I'm am? A, no, I'm happy, not happy that he's gone. I, he I, was the worst president that this country has ever experienced. No, I mean, that's your personal opinion, and I respect that. I love what he represented. I what love, did he represent? I mean, just in terms of just being the first black president. Oh, Jesus. That don't mean nothing. It, to, to me, to me, it meant a lot. I, I love the, the image that him and Michelle gave in terms of just the black family, uh, them just but being Michelle from the But Michelle was the ruler side. over him. She was not the ruler. How do you do? You have proof of that? You, did you ever see Michelle? What, just because she's a certain you. way. Wait, like just you because saw she's. That. Wait, I saw that no, you saw I'm saying it. no. That's no, just my no, reaction. No, I saw just, that you saw what I meant. No, I didn't know what you meant. Just because she was, uh, what, 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 did, what, what does she look like in order to be, <laughs> to rule over him? Because she was black and she had, <laughs> what? What made him her she ruler? Was hard looking, tough. No, no, she was not hard looking. She was not hard looking. I saw to her me. the other day in her fro. And? Different story than what she had, the hair she had on what? in the White House. You saw my picture. My hat, I had a perm. Now I got braids. President Trump is going to put a big, beautiful wall around the borders because illegals are coming in and they are hurting black people first and foremost and that they're moving into their communities. They're taking the jobs. They're bringing violence, crime, and drugs. Not all. They Not hate all. black people. They're Not supported all. by the drug cartels. Are you happy that the president is putting this big, beautiful wall around the borders? Irrespective of whether it happens or not, I, I don't have an opinion about that. But you have to notice that, in the, especially in that area where your father's buildings are, or built the buildings, the Mexicans, the illegal aliens, are taking over those areas. And at Crenshaw and Manuel Arts and those high schools in the area, there are fights every day between blacks and Mexicans because the black kids are feeling pushed out. I don't think necessarily black people left because of Hispanics. So you're not bothered by what's happening with the blacks as a result of Hispanics coming in? You're not bothered by that? I don't know exactly that what the Hispanics, when they come in, that they're doing specifically to black people. What is the state of black women in your generation? They can't find husbands. They, they have to go and get jobs on their own, those who are working. They have these babies they have to provide for themselves. And they are perceived as angry women. You date black women? Yeah, what I date, I date black women. You say you date black women. Yes. And you say that we, so why are you continuing to date black women? Because I know how to deal with them. I know how to uh -huh. show them how to overcome that anger. I'm not afraid of them. Okay. And I realize that they're So if they have more men like you in right. the home who could, who could, then yeah. I mean, I think there is going to be, you know, some sense of strength in that. But, but remember too, we were getting beaten and whipped in slavery too. So that, our, our femininity was beaten out of- You were getting what? Of, we were getting beaten and raped. When did you get beat? I'm just talking about culturally. Who beat you? Our slave masters. <laughs> you were born on a plantation. I'm sure they got you. No. <laughs> I'm sure they, Black sure they were better. When you it a comes bit. to uh, <laughs> when it came, when it comes to morality, when it comes to marriage, lack of abortions, uh, treating people the way that they would like to be treated, owning property, getting education, getting a good education in black universities, in the black schools. Blacks were better off then than they are today. I do believe that um, integration was probably one of the worst things that happened to black yeah. people. And why I agree with that. Forced integration was horrible. It should not have happened. Why do you agree to that? Because I think it allowed us the opportunity to assimilate versus really thinking like we were talking about with Black Wall Street. Think about recycling, you know what I mean, our culture and our economics in our communities. I mean, we're at 1.1 trillion dollar consumer spending yeah. uh, people. So to the extent that we have that much money in our purses, why do our communities look the way they do? They, because we have such economic leakage. We no, it's we're because they see, hate one another. They no, have so much I, anger. I, I don't and think that it's anger I think, won't even let them live together. I don't think, no, because I think, but what, we, what are we spending that $1.1 trillion on? We're spending it on red bottoms that we shouldn't and cars and yeah. materialistic things. But so that's we, what anger does. It costs you to look something 
look for something on the outside. I don't think that that's anger. Why do you think black people, are you angry? You're black. Are you angry? I used to be angry. I had that black anger. Okay, so, so how but did I'm you? I'm over it now. Were you honored by Al Sharpton group? I was not honored personally by Al Sharpton. He has oh, an organization called the National Action Network in their Los Angeles chapter. Well, did you feel embarrassed by that? No, why? Did you think that was a good thing? I think it was. I think it's always be good to be acknowledged for your peers and your contributions in your community. But Al Sharpton is such an immoral. But, but it wasn't from Al Sharpton. Poor example. It was, it but they from represent him. No, Why did you reject it and say, you know what, Al Sharpton is a bad example? Because it wasn't from and Al Sharpton. Anyone who's connected to him, I'm, I don't want it. It wasn't from Al you Sharpton. You do agree that Al is a bad example of a human being, right? No, I don't agree with that. You don't agree no. with that? Why not? Because I just don't. I just have a different opinion. I read that you host a breakfast fundraiser at your home that Obama attended back in sometime in 2012, is that right? Right, we did. So are you disappointed that over the last 50 years that not one black politician, male or female, not one black preacher, not one black president has been able to go into the urban areas, clean out the gang, the gang violence and the drugs, and give normal black people a chance to breathe so they can rebuild or restart their lives? It's going to take a white savior like Donald Trump to do it. Are you disappointed? White savior? Yes. Well, first of all, he was the first black president, and he adopted some of the baggage from the previous Are you president. disappointed that he had the, the power of the United States of America behind him, and he had the police departments which, which would have supported him, and he did not one thing to end gang violence and drugs and crimes in the inner city. I think he could have did more for black people if black people had an agenda. Did you have fun? Doing what? This. Talking to you? Uh -huh. You all right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't talk, just hold me closer. Let me sit on top of your knee. Go ahead and take care of business for me, for me, for me. I am so excited. I can't believe it. Finally, the Fall Estate merchandise is here. Look at this beautiful shirt. We have red, white, and black. Comfortable, I like to fit. Really nice t-shirts. And we have mugs. The Fall Estate mug. On the back it says, did you have fun? <laughs> did you have fun? A gift. Excellent gifts, both. This is a great way for you to help us. Can you imagine your friends seeing you with this at the office, at the park, in your home? You're going to love it. Order them now. Go to thefallestate.tv. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. On the season finale of The Fallen State. So the reason black communities have more violent crime is because they were intentionally redlined by government laws and leasing regulations to put them in certain communities that already had lead poisoning and no, you can breathe like you want to interrupt me, but the reason you want to do that is because these facts really fuck up with your paradigm. No, I want to interrupt you because what you're saying is ridiculous. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.